Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Do you see yourself as sin being a real problem in your life and something that you can't handle? Or do you say, I am dead to sin. I consider myself dead to sin. I'm not going to get up today and be afraid I'm going to sin. I actually believe that I'm going to be led by the Holy Spirit and I'm going to walk in righteousness today. Okay, now you say, now listen, you say, well, if I'm so dead to sin, then why am I still sinning? Are you ready? When we sin and do things wrong, He forgives us completely. He doesn't even mention or bring up past sins. God's mercy is new every day. Every day can be a brand new start. God's grace is amazing. We're saved by grace. We can live by grace. I could stand here all day and just tell you about all the great and wonderful things of God, and I love to do that. But also, we need to share that although sin can be forgiven, it can also be a problem. And a good old message on sin is just good for us every once in a while. And so I'm going to talk to you this morning about how to handle sin, how to confront sin, what to do about sin. And sin doesn't have to be a problem, but I want us to do more than just sin, get forgiven, sin, get forgiven, sin, get forgiven, sin, get forgiven. Oh, well, there's another step. Sin, be condemned. Finally receive forgiveness. Maybe a week later, crawl out from under the condemnation. Now, sin, be condemned. Ask God to forgive you. Another week or two weeks of suffering, crawl out from under the condemnation. Right. Sin. That's right. Is anybody hearing me? God's got a better plan than that for us because the Bible says that we are dead to sin. Now, God hates sin, but He loves sinners. And the title of this book is God is not mad at you, and God is not mad at you. But God does get mad about sin. And He gets mad about sin, and He gets mad about the sin in our lives, not because of what it does to Him, but because of what it does to us. God is firmly set that He wants us to have a good life. And He paid for us to have it by sending His only Son to die for us. And unbelievably painful death took all of our sins upon himself that holy righteous son of God taking all of our sin upon himself becoming sin for us that we might have a great life the thief comes only to kill steal and destroy but Jesus said I came that they might have and enjoy their life and have it in abundance to the full until it overflows and I love what the Apostle Paul said. I am determined, now listen to this, this is, in, this is in Philippians 3. I am determined to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus died to take hold of me. Come on, get that. I am determined. You've got to have some determination if you are going to live a godly life, especially in the world that we live in today. And I'm sure every preacher in every generation would have said that. But I'm telling you what, the longer the world is around, the worse it gets. So however bad it was 100 years ago, it is worse today. And we are going to have to want godliness because there is compromise everywhere that we look. Amen. And we dare not just float along with everybody else. We have to stand up and be counted. Amen. I'm determined to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus died to take hold of me. I believe that God deserves our best. I don't think he should get some kind of half-baked, puny, whiny, anemic effort. I think that God deserves our very best. And thankfully, when we do mess up, which is frequently, we can always repent, be quick to repent. He forgives us. It's as if we never did it. But let's don't just be satisfied to live like that. 
Amen. I want to stir you up today to say I am not satisfied to just be mediocre. I am not satisfied to be average. I am not satisfied to spend my whole life sinning, being condemned, finally being forgiven, getting out from under the condemnation, doing it all over again. I want to grow in higher levels of holiness. And let me say this right on. Holiness is not following a bunch of rules and regulations. This is what holiness is, being led by the Holy Spirit. That's, what holy, that's, that's all that holiness really is. Because the Holy One lives in us, and we don't have the law on stone tablets anymore. By the way, it came on stone tablets because it was hard, and it hardened people's hearts. Now, God has given us a soft and a tender heart toward Him, and He has written the law of God in our hearts, and He's given us His Holy Spirit to assure us that we can keep it if we want to. Today, we're going to work on our want to. And I hope to be able to get something across, and you can agree or not agree. I don't know. Every once in a while, I get bold and say, it's my meeting, so I'm going to say what I want to. But I'm, first of all, anything that God has told us to do, He will give us the ability to do it. How many of you will agree with that? Now, I want you to pay attention to what you just agreed to. <laughs> do you know what you just said yes to? Anything that God asks us to do, we have the ability to do it. Well, we could just stop there and just say amen and go home. Because, see, we don't really believe that. It's like, Otherwise, we wouldn't just say all the time, well, I can't, it's too hard, I mean, I, I, well, I know, and, you know, me, me, not, you know, it's just hard, and, well, you know, I, I, I got a bondage in that area, and, you know, I, I, I'm addicted, and it, I just can't help it, it's the way I was raised, and. I want you to listen to what you just said. You said, I believe <laughs> that anything God asks me to do, that He gives me the ability to do it. So we have the ability to forgive anybody who hurts us. So therefore, there's no reason for anybody in this room or anybody watching my television to be mad at anybody. I got lots of energy in the morning. Get ready. <laughs> I believe. <laughs> and I mean, it does make sense. Why in the world would God tell me to do something and then stand back and laugh at me because I couldn't do it? Why would he say forgive people? Why would he say be kind, be patient, be generous? Why would he give me all these instructions? Be a woman of prayer. Study the Word of God. Be full of the Word. Help other people. Forget about yourself and live a life of helping other people. Wow, well, bless God, what about me? Well, you know, if you do that, then people are just going to take advantage of you. No, we need to stop making excuses, and we just need to get about saying, if God said it, He has given me the ability to do it, and by His grace, by His power, I can do whatever God asks me to do. So here's what we really have. We have a want-to problem. Oh, I feel feisty today. And you know, we don't want to think that we don't pray because we don't want to. We don't want to think that we don't spend regular quality time with God because we don't want to. I mean, can you imagine just saying to God, I don't spend any time with you because I don't want to. Well, nobody's going to do that. We're going to have a whole bunch of excuses, but that's all they are, really, is excuses. And an excuse, by the way, is a reason stuffed with a lie. God loves us so much, and my goodness, the price that He has paid for us to have the opportunity to live the kind of life that's being offered to us. It is nothing short of a tragic shame if we don't literally put our whole selves into being what God has given us the opportunity to be. 
Whether I do or don't is not going to change God. God is. This is my opportunity. You know, Joshua said, you decide for yourself what you're going to do, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And to be honest, I, you know, I'm going to have to think this over some, but I was, I was pondering this a little bit last night and this morning. I don't think we really hear very much teaching about the will of man. <laughs> you know, we hear a lot about the grace of God. I teach all the time on the grace of God, and I know I can't do anything apart from God. But I do believe that whatever he asks me to do, that I can do it. I can't do it without him. But I can do it with him, and he is with me all the time. And I do believe that whatever God asks me to do, I'm able to do it. So I've just kind of given up all the dumb excuses. It took me a long time, but I can help you fast forward your spiritual walk if you'll listen to me. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You won't have to waste as much time as I did right. if you listen. God loves us tremendously. And one of the greatest, now listen to me, one of the greatest honors that God has given us is free will. I set before you life and death. Choose life. He even told us the answer. <laughs> we didn't even have to figure it out ourselves. It's like, hello? Well, should I choose life or should I choose death? This is really difficult. <laughs> I said before you, life and death, choose life that you and your descendants might live. Yeah. We've had our children come to us, different ones of them at different times, and say, Mom, Dad, thank you for pressing through and paying the price that you paid. Because if you wouldn't have pressed in, I wouldn't have the life that I have today. When you make right decisions, it does not just affect you. It affects your children, and it affects your grandchildren. I set before you life and death. Choose. Now, having free will, awesome. <laughs> Man, I can do what I want to. But having a free will is also... An unbelievably huge responsibility. God has already said He loves us. He loves us unconditionally. That's a settled fact. God's going to love us no matter what we do. But I'm going to put another question out to you. Do you love God? With... The greatest commandment is you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength. That's the greatest, the most important commandment. You shall love the Lord your God with all. With all that you've got. With your time. With your money. With your thoughts. With your habits. With your entertainments. You just have to excuse me, but I just flat out am in love with God. I mean, I just can't help it. I am in love with God. I don't just love Him. I am in love with Him. And you know, God spends years and years in our life establishing that relationship with Him. I love you. I'll give you mercy. I'll provide for you. I'll give you grace. And then there comes a time, just like any parent would like to hear a child come around and say, Mom, Dad, what can I do for you? If we never get around to that, then it's all just a one-sided thing where the kid is just, gimme, 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 gimme. Right. I'm in trouble once again, mom and dad, can you get me out? And that's not a satisfying relationship. We want our children to come and say, what can I do for you? I have children now that are in my house every day. Do you need anything? Can I get you anything? Is there anything you need? They take care of us, and I'm like, yes. Yes. My one daughter that helps me, she'll call me in the morning and say, uh, um, I'll say to her, what are you doing today? She'll say, well, what do you need me to do? Oh, oh my gosh, that is so wonderful. And God wants to hear us say every morning, what do you need me to do today, God? What do you need me for today? 
Can I do something for you today? Would you at least begin there by adding that to your prayer list? God, what can I do for you today? Come on, somebody give God praise. So what are we going to do about sin? Well, it's impossible to be free from it unless we hate it. So everybody just for practice say, I hate sin. I hate what it does to people. I hate what it does to me. I hate what it's done to the world. I hate what it's done to people. And if you want to know the truth, I hate the devil. Because he is the root of all of it. Now listen, I'm going to read you a little bit of this Joyce Meyer book. <laughs> Although we know that all manner of sin can be forgiven, and there is no amount of sin that can prevent us from having a wonderful relationship with God, we still do need to deal with our sin. So what are we going to do about it? What should our attitude be toward it? And that's really the thing that I want to get across today is what should our attitude be toward sin? I believe that we must hate it just as God does and that we must resist it steadfastly in the power of the Holy Spirit. We cannot be filled with God's Spirit and ever be satisfied with a life of sin and compromise. Although we should hate sin, we should never hate ourselves because we sin. God hates sin, but he loves sinners. Now, I want you to listen to this next little bit here. Only a mature believer is able to squarely face their sin and not feel condemned. And if people really knew who they were in Christ, they would not mind strong, fiery preaching. I listened to a teaching tape by a guy the other day, and I mean, he was tearing it up. And I loved it. You know why? Because I don't mind at all facing my faults and weaknesses. I want to know because I already know that God's love for me is not based on what I do right or wrong. He's going to love me either way, but I want to know if there's something there that needs to be fixed because I want to do that for him. I don't want to live a sloppy life or just do what I can get by with. Please, God, if I'm doing something that offends you, tell me. I don't want to do that. I'm talking to you today about a heart attitude. Do you have any idea how much compromise is going on in the world today? And even in the church. Come on. We should not be asking the question, what all can I get by with and still sneak into heaven? That should never be on our mind. Can I do that and still go to heaven? Can I do that and still go to heaven? No, that should not be the cry of our heart. The cry of our heart should be, God, how can I be what you want me to be so I can be a bright light shining out in the dark world? Now, I'm not talking about being like some kind of religious prune. I'm talking about getting out there and being a living example of how wonderful it is to serve God. I am excited about God. Only a mature believer is able to squarely face their sin and not feel condemned. We know that sin is a reality and one that we deal with every day. So how can we deal with it and not be consumed by the reality of it? I believe it is only by firmly believing that God is greater than our sin and by recognizing that sin is definitely part of the human condition. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Therefore, all are made right with God through the blood of Christ. What shall we say to all this? Are we to remain in sin in order that God's grace might multiply and overflow? Now, Paul was bringing the grace message, telling people that they were forgiven by the grace of God, that no matter how much sin there was, that God's grace would abound and, and override that sin. And so just like people always do, they always kind of get out of balance with everything. And so now they're kind of trying to take it, you know, to an extreme. And let me say that we have a lot of teaching floating around today about grace. I just did a brand new series on grace. I love teaching on grace. I love teaching on the mercy of God, the goodness of God, the love of God. But I will also tell you that that's not the only thing and all that we need to hear. Every once in a while, I need somebody to get in my face and say, don't do that. <laughs> Every once in a while, I need to hear a good message on you reap what you sow. <laughs> 
Every once in a while, now maybe you don't need them, but every once in a while I need a good message on obedience. I, I love a good message on holiness. I love a good message on let's be led by the Holy Spirit. We need the whole counsel of the Word of God, not just one part of it. We've got to have the whole thing. Amen? So, Paul came with a message of grace, and so they got all excited about grace. And they said, well, maybe we just ought to sin a whole lot. So we can have a whole lot of grace. Now you might think that nobody would be that dumb, but. And Paul said, certainly not. How can you who died to sin live in it any longer? So the Bible says that we are dead to sin. And if you look at Romans 6 verse 11, it says, even so consider yourselves dead to sin and your relationship to it broken but that you are alive to God, living in unbroken fellowship with Him in Christ Jesus. So he's saying, now, you're dead to sin, so how do you see yourself? Do you see yourself as sin being a real problem in your life and something that you can't handle? Or do you say, I am dead to sin, I consider myself dead to sin, I'm not going to get up today and be afraid I'm going to sin. I actually believe that I'm going to be led by the Holy Spirit and I'm going to walk in righteousness today. Okay, now, you say, now listen, you say, well, if I'm so dead to sin, then why am I still sinning? Are you ready? <laughs> because we're dead to sin. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that sin is dead. So, the devil chases us around. Temptation, which by the way is not sin. To be tempted is not sin if you use your sanctified willpower to say no. Now see, we'd rather think we can't help it. Well, if, if, if I just wasn't tempted, well, you can forget that. You can just, you know, I didn't feel real great when I first got up this morning. I kind of pulled a groin muscle last week working out, and so I got up. I had a little headache. You know that I couldn't find something I was looking for, and I well, these people never put stuff where they're supposed to put it. <laughs> and I had to just get hold of myself right away. Okay, okay, Miss Preacher. Straighten your attitude up. You got to resist the devil at his onset. Resist him at his onset. I was tempted. I was tempted right there early this morning to get a bad attitude. Been running around all over the world for 37 years, preaching to people, want another conference. Here we are. I didn't like that bed. There's no light in this place. The bathroom's too little. <laughs> Come on. Sin is not dead, but I'm dead to it. I don't have to let that attitude infest me and work it out in my attitude toward people all day, every day. Is anybody home here this morning? You know what? Why I would ever complain about this is beyond me because I begged God to let me do this. I mean, for years, I was like, oh, God, you got to use me. God, God. Oh, God, I want to go to the world. I want to go to the nations. Oh, God, please, let me do big conference all over the world. Oh, God, 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 please use me. Oh, yes, God, I want to be on TV. I want to be on radio. Oh, God, help me, help me. <laughs> Are you sure you want that? <laughs> oh, God, I need a bigger house. I got to have a bigger house. And then a week later, oh, my God, I got to clean this big house. I'm so... Come on, oh God, I want to have kids. Lord, I just want a dozen kids. Please, God, give me kids, kids. I love kids. I got to have kids. Oh my God, if these kids don't grow up and get out of here, I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> oh, I want to be married, God. Please, 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 I want to be married, God. I got to have a Just give me a man, God. I got to have a man. Oh God, why did you give me this man? Come on, is anybody home in the house today?
You know, when Jesus was tempted not to go to the cross and fulfill the will of God, which, by the way, he was tempted, Amen. it wasn't easy for him to obey God. And he said, your will be done and not mine. Here I am, oh God, come to do your will. How about that every morning? Lifting up those hands. Here I am, oh God, come to do your will. How about if we get wise enough to say, God, I know I'm going to be tempted today because I know the devil hates me. But I believe in the Holy Ghost through your wisdom and strength that I can resist that temptation. And I'm grateful, God, that if I do fail or fall, that, I, that your forgiveness has already been bought and paid for. I know you love me unconditionally, but God, I want to take hold of those things that you died to take hold of me. I want to live the life that you provided me. Well, God does hate sin, but he loves sinners. And he's not mad at us, but he is mad and what sin can do to us. God is ready and waiting to help us overcome the sin in our life if we'll just let Him. Nancy is two years old, but when she was about three months old, something fell on her head and, and the injury basically stunted all of her development and her growth from that point forward. And so she hasn't really been able to, to develop like a normal child since that time. But because of our medical clinics here, she's come back the last two days and they've been able to, to get her the medicines that she needs. They've been able to teach the family how to work with uh, Nancy on, on physical therapy and how to, to, to teach her and train her so that there's a very, very good chance that with these medicines and with you know, the physical therapy that she'll walk someday and that she'll be able to overcome this injury. Nancy's parents have brought her two days in a row because they love her so much and they want her to get the help she needs. On their behalf, as a parent, we just thank you that we can come and help beautiful children like Nancy. Hi, sweetie. You are a beautiful girl. Yes, you are.